first I should correct myself, uh, 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 Ruth Bader Ginsburg, there were actually three no votes. She was confirmed 96 to 3 overwhelmingly, but there were three no votes to that nomination. And interestingly, Rick, uh, you know, people will seize on him calling uh, Kagan ignorant of the Commerce Clause, the word ignorant. Uh, when he spoke last night, before he got into his tough questions, uh, he said that, Kagan, you are as smart as all get out, super accomplished, tough as nails. I would not want to be a Supreme Court justice with you. I think you'd run, I'd get run all over. I believe you have the superior intellect and ability to reason. So he wasn't calling her ignorant right. last night. Well, very interesting. It's post politics time. We're joined now by Dana Milbank of the Washington Post, uh, who looking a little bit like Senator Milbank today from the up on up on <laughs> Capitol Hill. Uh, Dana, first of all, you're a pretty funny guy. Elena Kagan had them in stitches yesterday. Is she really funny or is it just kind of for Washington funny? You know, I actually have been uh, wrote about Elena Kagan for the first time uh, 12 years ago, so I had a little uh, sense of that. I don't think you're going to see her, you know, doing a nightclub routine, uh, <laughs> but she's a little bit droll, and and she's got sort of a uh, a sense of the ironic. Uh, there's a mischievous side to her. I mean, you know, she was a, a, a basically a teenage smoker, so you know that <laughs> you can sort of see where that was coming from there. And there's definitely a lot of uh, uh, mischievous potential in her. Obviously, you don't want you can only go so far when you're uh, sitting there on television in front of the people who are about to vote on your nomination. But you haven't heard a hell of a lot of substance in this hearing, have you? Oh, you didn't hear it? She gave her uh, explicit opinion on uh, Roe v. Wade, on uh, gun rights and uh, gay rights? No, of course not. And anybody who thought that uh, she was going to follow uh, her own advice in that 1995 uh, Law Review article when she said the nominee should be honest and, and forthright about her uh, judicial uh, uh, opinions, you had to be crazy to believe that she'd actually do that because that's the only way that she could have uh, disrupted this nomination. And the, the way to sail through is to do what her predecessors have done, and that is uh, don't answer a single question at all. And I, I think Tom Coburn in his interview with you said several crazy things, but one thing he said that made uh, a good deal of sense is maybe we should just can this whole idea of these uh, of these hearings and go oh, back to uh, ha having them submit some written some written questionnaire. There's so much fun and such good television. And Dana, you, you've been ha you've been having some fun of your own on your on your blog at WashingtonPost.com the last couple of days with some of the, the zanier political ads that are out there. There's one in particular that I wanted to highlight and ask you about. This is Rick Barber's, uh, a candidate for Congress, Republican candidate for Congress. Take a look at uh, who he's got starring in his ad. Mm -hmm. If someone's forced to work for months to pay taxes so that a total stranger can get a free meal, medical procedure, or a bailout, what's that called? What's it called when one man is forced to work for another? Slavery. Now, Dana, if you have to summon a uh, a long dead president to, uh, to, <laughs> to to help your campaign, what does that say about the state of the race? <laughs> Uh, it says that there are curious politics uh, going on down there, and I don't even think that was the uh, the worst part of it. Not only does he uh, have some sort of a seance and bring uh, Abe Lincoln back to life to campaign for him, he he then shows images of of Auschwitz. I mean, <laughs> it it I don't know how far beyond the pale you can go anymore. There is no pale to go beyond, uh, and and that's just that's just the beginning of it. I mean, we've had multiple cases of uh, people invoking the Nazis uh, just in this last week alone. Uh, an aide for for uh, Senator Claire McCaskill on the Democratic side. You've got uh, Sarah Palin. You've got uh, this guy. And, uh, I mean, th there's another ad that's come out literally with a, a woman spends the entire time firing pistols and machine guns and she <laughs> wants to be, represent but, us in Congress. But, but it's, you know, it's worth pointing out that Rick Barber uh, is in a runoff that's going to be Tuesday. He, th his opponent had 49.5% of the vote uh, in, in, in the first round. Uh, he's become a YouTube sensation, but uh, maybe, unfortunately, we're not going to actually get to see him in Congress. <laughs> or well, I d that Lincoln uh, endorsement could be good for a percentage. <laughs> yeah or two down yeah, there. I mean, admittedly, it's the South, so you might not get all, the full bang <laughs> right, from the, the, from the link. Tomorrow, we'll, we'll literally have uh, Robert Byrd's dead body on the Senate floor, so we'll see what happens <laughs> all right, his well, dead like, body. It's, maybe, we'll maybe it's, it's, I don't know if that, how that ranks on the Lincoln scale uh, of, right. of, of wacky ads. Thanks, John. Twitter.com slash